It's official. The Idaho legislature will hold a special session starting on Monday. And just like its name, it's pretty special. The last time Idaho held a special session was in 2015, and before that it was 2006. And before that, only four other times were lawmakers called into special session since 1971. So you see where it gets its name. It's pretty special. Governor Little issued the proclamation this morning outlining the parameters of this special session. Only a few pieces of legislation on two specific topics will be discussed. So lawmakers from both parties, some of them, they were actually hoping that more topics would have been included. So what is on the agenda? Joe Paris talked to lawmakers and sets the stage for us. Early Wednesday, Governor Brad Little set the agenda for the now official special legislative session. The agenda includes two topics, civil liability related to COVID and the upcoming November election. First, on civil liability, Democrat Representative Melissa Wintrow explains the idea behind the legislation. This bill seeks to limit liability to businesses and government when it comes to folks filing a lawsuit that might be related to contracting COVID. Wintrow says there are already practices in place to address the issue, and she's hearing concern from constituents. An example, how this ties into public schools. I think that everyday citizens are struggling with the fact that government is included in that release of liability and to basically be encouraging folks to get back to school and work and then say, hey, we're not gonna, uh, we're gonna let ourselves off the hook is not really favorable to many citizens. And I think that's a real concern with this piece of legislation. The legislative intent attached to the proposal explains the idea is to limit liability from entities who make good faith efforts to meet COVID requirements. The legislation itself says the immunity provided shall not apply if a person fails to make a good faith effort to comply with the statute, rules, or lawful order of a government entity. However, further down the legislation says non-compliance with guidelines or recommendations related to COVID alone shall not be used to establish civil liability. We place these kind of immunities for business and government and so forth, what, incentivize, what incentives exist for folks to actually uh, do their absolute best in safety? And as we can see, this issue has been politicized. Turning to the other topic on the table, the upcoming November election. House Majority Caucus Chair Megan Blanksma explains the idea behind the legislation. It addresses absentee balloting to help the clerks deal with what is a, a substantial increase in absentee ballot because of the COVID-19 situation. The second one also deals with voting and tries to consolidate down to vote centers to make those available so people can vote in person, and, but also limit potentially the number of voting locations in case we can't find the poll workers for that. Blanksman says the legislation further helps county clerks with the expected heavy workload. It gives them more flexibility in mailing out the ballots, and then it gives them some flexibility with regard to count, not necessarily counting, but scanning the ballots in. They won't necessarily tabulate it early, but then they can open and scan. Overall, some Democrats and Republicans say they wish the special session agenda included other topics like public health district authorities and education funding. I think that there's a little bit of disappointment because there were some issues proposed that are not going to be addressed, but as we know constitutionally, the governor's the one who sets the topic. We should be looking at health, safety, and really providing a good, good solution to education. Idaho Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan also weighing in this afternoon on what was not on the agenda for the special session. We'll pull up her full statement here. I want to read you a section of it. She says, quote, unfortunately, the proposals that will be considered do not include any action or reining in the overreach of public health districts or dealing with education funding. The governor said he believes these issues do not require immediate action by the legislature at this time. She goes on to say that Idaho has more than 300,000 K through 12 students whose education and future hangs in the balance. She finishes saying, I strongly encourage governor and legislative leadership not to delay taking action on this matter. Kim, again, a big conversation this afternoon. Not really as much about what is on the agenda, but what was left off. Hmm. 
Yeah, so this is one of those special powers that the governor has declaring the special session, being able to set the agenda like this. Do we have any idea, Joe, how long this session will last, the special session? <laughs> Yeah, talking with lawmakers uh, over the last week and this morning, we get the idea it'll be at least one day. Traditionally, special sessions are about one or two days. But because of some of the debates that may surround that civil liability, there is expectations that this could go two, three days. We will find out, though, when it kicks off on Monday, what the tone for this special session will be. So that's a lot to hammer out in one day. Stay tuned, right? All right, Joe, thank you.